I think it's fair to say I wasn't too kind to ASUS when they released a $300 Beard 50 mover board that didn't even do much to justify the price. But if you still want that ASUS ROG name but at a budget, well they do also have the ASUS ROG Strix Beard 50A gaming Wi-Fi, costing a more modest $240 instead. So what exactly do you get for that price and exactly how does it differ from its X870 variant? Well starting off with CPU power, here we have 14 plus 2 plus 2 power faces rated at a maximum of 80 amps, which while a small downgrade from the 16 plus 2 plus 2 90 amp config on the X870 is still more than enough, especially at this kind of price point and it's literally going to serve you well no matter what AMD CPU you put in it. Though what's interesting to note is that the maximum rated memory of a clock speed is still just 8000 mega transfers per second, even if some other beat 50 boards go to 8200. But again, I don't think too many people are going to be buying such expensive fast memory when they're buying a more budget board. But okay, what about the PCE expansion here? Well, just like its X870 Brethren, it only has two expansion slots, which is definitely on the low side, which some people will say that's unacceptably low, while others will say, come on, who needs more than two slots nowadays? The primary one is, as you can expect, a Gen 5 16x slot for your graphics card, and the other one provides you with four Gen 4 lanes, even if it is a physical 16x slot. And storage-wise, while you do get four M2 slots, you only get two SATA connectors, which is almost insulting at this kind of price. And the primary slot is Gen 5, as you expect, and the other three are all Gen 4, though with that third M2 slot sharing bandwidth with that second PC expansion slot. So just keep that in mind. Other internal I.O. include seven various fan connectors, which should be enough unless you have one of those cases that can fit like 12 fans in it. And Asus once again cheap out by not including a legacy 4-pin RGB connector instead opting for just three addressable ones. Again, it really does not cost a lot, and again it's great to have if you still use those older devices. But anyway, when it comes to rear I.O., you have a pretty acceptable 8 USB Type-A ports, and as a bonus only two of them are Gen 2, and something we don't see enough of on B850 boards, a 20 gigabit Type-C port, along with a 10 gigabit one. What's also nice to see is that they didn't choose between either HDMI or DisplayPort for onboard graphics, they gave you both. And you also get the expected 2.5 gig Ethernet, more than enough at this budget. You also get the expected Wi-Fi 7, and your audio options include just two audio jacks and optical speedoff, running off the ALC 4080 codec. Meaning that, apart from just those two set of connectors and missing 4-pin RGB connectors, there really isn't anything too bad or offensive about this board for their price, even if there are much cheaper B50 boards out there, or hey, even cheaper X870 boards out there. And actually, the big draws, as always, is just an ROG name, but also, with this motherboard's case, the white aesthetic. However, if you're doing a white build, you can also get cheaper white boards as well. And now I'm not talking about white boards, I'm talking about white boards, the other type. But anyway, if you want to get this one, then our Amazon and New York links to it will be up in the iCards and down in the video description below. We're also going to find a Patreon. I think as well, while some of these mobile boards we cover are dubious in value, our Patreon is always worth it. Plus, huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vroniak, Valdez Volker, Patrick Harrison, not a student in Mech, Sumner, Shane Allcroft, and Level Up. But anyway, that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye. Thank you.